Hi, my name is Ken Lasselson. I run the site Microbiome Prescription. And I'm breaking from my usual thing of often doing reviews of people microbiome as blogs to actually doing a video of this one for a couple of reasons. Um, one is I want to try to see if a video is helpful to more people than just reading people of different learning styles that I know as a former teacher. So I'm going to try it. It's actually probably going to be at least a two-parter. Could easily end up being a three-part or so. Prepare, get your popcorn out, get com get yourself comfortable, and away we go. By the way, what I'm doing probably is the same process for any type of medical conditions, whatever you want to look at. It is a method methodology of doing it. It's not really autism specific. It's just that autism is a special interest of mine. As usual, I'm overclicked, so back to where. So I did breaking into two parts for the video. Video one, we describe what the intent of the outcome. Then we take a look at the quick, t what I call takeout. You got made at home food that may take hours or days to make, um, and you have your quick takeout, which you just walk out the window to grab and you go. So. And we're going to look at the free quick takeouts, the quick supplement fixes from the microbiome site. Um, and they can be broken down into free classification end products, enzymes, and cake modulars. Then we're going to go on and review an absolutely beautiful set of lab results that was sent along with from the person who is a parent of an autistic child who is three years old, and it has hair analysis, the organic acid test, toxinol metal chemical profiles, blood words, um, metabol mix, which means this is a pretty comprehensive collection of labs to go with it, and it means that I get to take a look at things. I can try out concept which I think conceptually should work remember a lot of the stuff I'm doing is being done on a theoretical speculative basis so some of some of the reports and comparing results may actually be very helpful to find out is my speculation reasonably close or is it totally off the, off the mark which is a nice thing to know I'm willing to admit okay I blew it that that doesn't work which is nice and we'll get on with other things Video 2 basically goes and puts things together. We'll find from the above items, there are items where we have consensus about and we will have disagreements about. So we need to get those items sorted out and figure out what we're going to do about it. Same thing will happen with, with almost every condition. You have agreements and you will have disagreements. Okay, let's just move on so we know what our key objectives are. So key objectives, well, I view medicine and medical conditions somewhat like a detective story. And in some cases, the police catch a person holding a smoking gun, it's slammed quickly to jail, slammed them quickly to trial, everything is resolved. That's nice. Typical case in terms of medicine is you have typhoid, you have smallpox, you have measles. Basically, it is a absolutely straightforward slam dunk, no thinking, okay, everything is there. Other cases, we got a lot of sleuthing around to do. Uh, if you watch any of the detective movies, from Miss Marple to um, uh, Death in Paradise, etc., there's a lot of sleuthing sometimes to happen. Bits and pieces have been put together to figure out what's going on. Some cases, we end up with a very strong suspect, but not enough evidence. In other words, we know who did it, we just can't prove it. Um, medicine that happens, and often a medical professional will go on this hunch and proceed to treatment based on a hunch, which sometimes is good, sometimes it has inadvertent side effects because it just happens to have missed what the problem is. In some cases have compounding matters. In the last case, we end up with no suspects and very little evidence. In other words, 
we are mystified. We don't know what is there. So we need evidence, lab tests, including microbiome, are all pieces of evidence. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what we can figure out from the available evidence for this particular child. My intent is first to help the mother of the child. The second intent is to try to show and teach the mother and any other parents or patients who are watching this video how to fish. The old saying, you teach, you give a man food, he'll be hungry tomorrow. You teach him how to fish, he keeps being able to feed himself. I really don't want to be doing endless analysis of different people. First of all, I'm going to not have time enough to do it because I suspect the demand may keep slowly keep going up. I'd rather teach you how to do it yourself to the limit and if I do it for people, then it's for people who there's special reasons to do it. Either typically ME CFS, people with severe um, cognitive issues, in which case then I will because often they have no other sources of information around them, either friends or family or anybody else to do it for them. But let's look at hopefully somebody who's watching just would be able for the patient be able to learn how to go fishing. My microbiome work is exper is large experiment and theoretical. I basically are connecting dots together and say, oh, there's a pattern here. Ah, I think this pattern will probably work. For myself personally, it has worked. Could have been pure coincidence. I hate case studies of one person because you don't know if it's true or not. We do have a lot of clinical lab tests available for this person, which makes it possible to do a bit of double checking and we also see if we have opportunity for theory to bump into reality i have no problem saying i'm wrong so let's find out how badly wrong or right i may be couple of disclaimers i am not a medical professional i cannot give medical advice i cannot advise what to do i am look good at looking at data I'm good at detecting patterns. I, I'm good at being able to do a moderately good interpretation of medical papers. And what my goal is to strive to ask questions to be discussed with a knowledgeable medical professional. In other words, hey, I find something, it's interesting. Perhaps I don't find a single study about it. There's absolutely nothing out there. But there is a logic, not a clinical study. There's a logic to want to investigate it, which means ideally the logic would cause you to ask a question of your medical professional. Since my usual turf is manipulating the microbiome without the use of drugs, by diet and supplements, etc., 99% of the time a medical professional being asked, it's just acceptable, will say, I don't see a problem with it, go ahead, simply because they have no clue. So their response is, no problem, or, uh, well, this is also my uh, expertise, my wheelhouse of knowledge. The reference data, data we are going to be looking at is from adults, including microbiome prescription. I don't have very many children on uh, microbiome uploaded, which of course means I don't have the ability to create reference sets for them. Most of the labs also do not have lab um, results for children, um, which means that their values may well be off the mark for what a child who is three years old should be. It's a problem, and as I often have stated, it's not an idea, but what we are going to do is we're going to run with the best information we have until we get better information rather than sitting there and lamenting having less than ideal information. I should also say uh, my high functioning autism spectrum disorder or disease or whatever you care to call it. Typical for high function, I did a mathematics degree. Um, recent study at Cambridge University, they found that autism has a propensity to end up in the faculty of mathematics. And I can really understand that because the hyper-focus and dealing with a pure cognitive aspect, it is the only science that is absolutely pure because we don't have to deal with reality. It, everything is in the mind. 
it becomes attractive for many autism people because you don't have to learn about social interaction. You don't have to play politics with people about getting ideas across. You just present the proof, and either the proof makes it or doesn't make it in the story. So math is, in some sense, a career path which is somewhat devoid of social interaction or having to learn social skills, which, of course, makes it very nicely attractive. But with that, it also comes with the fact that I'm uber-focused. I'm very focused on an issue or approach. And we'll often, especially in terms of medical conditions, keep totally focused and not look at side issues. Oh, but but I have histamine issue. I have this issue. I have that issue. How do you put it in? In general, that's outside my scope of expertise. That's outside my focus. So I keep keeping myself to be uber-focused which means you need that outside medical expert to be able to make sure that something significant isn't being ignored. So, bottom line comes from, actually from Peter Adamo, the blood type um, diet person who I enjoy dealing with, and we've corresponded back and forth on occasion. As with all medicines, natural or otherwise, please consult with experts who are experienced in their actions, interactions, counterindications, and potential side effects before citing this or any other supplement. In other words, okay, you are now fully warned that the information you're about to receive is very, very conditional. Okay, so hopping on to the website and uh, let's just hop over there for a moment so on the red on website if you go and underneath changing your microbiome you go down and you select end product outliers you click that and it will go and show you things which are outliers in this case we have a whole bunch of things which are high value you can adjust the amount, for example, let's suppose you want to say, okay, anything which occurs less than 8%, and let's do 90, you can go and do that, and it will automatically recalculate things, so you can see things, again, everything is high values, and the percentile ranking means that this person is literally through the roof are a fair number of bacteria, as in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 of the um, end products, they are very high in, which automatically means, okay, something is happening here. Physically, it is unlikely to happen. Okay, so that's where we find this information. Besides just the outlines, we can, we can go in and take a look at what all the values are. So if we go over here to end product summary. Oops. We get the table and the table is sitting there. Default shows 10 or 20 items. There's 148 different items. So in other words, you're covering a pretty broad spectrum of things. And you can just click on one of the columns, for example, percentile, which you, if you do, you will find that it causes everything, the, the no values to be first. And then you have the high values if you click it a second time. So it goes in descending older, O order. So what we have is we can see things are high and we can either page through or we can go and says, okay, show me everything on one page to make life easier. And now I can just scroll down. And actually you, what you see is we have a high number in the top of the range there. And then suddenly we have a small number in the middle. And then we fall down to a few items which are low. Um, this particular one being low, forget it. It's connected with female hormones. We're talking about three-year-old boy. It's unlikely to come into play or be significant, so forget it. What I do find is we have apparently a low level of serotonin, 
which is interesting because traditionally serotonin in the blood, keyword in the blood with autism is has found to be high. So getting a low amount being produced from the microbiome is, is intriguing. So we'll come back to that later on. And we see other things, for example, um, low production of a variety of acids here and go through all of this information is interesting and all of it we actually will come back to later we can go in and put in a phrase here for a particular things like for example um type in b12 and we see it and i have an inconsistency i need to get those two combined into one actually i think one is a variation of the other but we still can get that fixed so we see for vitamin b12 we see that he's at the 88 almost 90 percentile in other words he's probably producing more vitamin b12 than the average person is doing so let's flip back over to the um, powerpoint so summary is on screen you can read through it and basically there is a um, study there which talks about it this is a 2020 study and let's just flip over there for a second and take a look at what it says and as you see it was published in october 2020 so it's only a couple of months old and it goes down um and what we have said here in the first paragraph is pretty clean there's increasing evidence suggesting a link between autism spectrum and gi microbiome experiment on clinical study have shown that patients diagnosed with asd display alterations in the gut microbiome these alterations do not extend to the gut microbiome composition but also to the metabolites they produce as a result of the connection with diet and the bi-directional interaction with the host in other words, what it's talking about is exactly what I've been advocating for a couple of years now and building a diagnostic tool to assist people. Basically, autism and the gut are associated to some degree. doesn't mean it accounts for 100%, but it does mean it's associated with some degree. So, good study which will bring you up to date with the latest thinking about autism and the microbiome for other medical conditions you will probably find similar studies out there for almost every single medical conditions because once the microbiome became easy to analyze at a cheap price suddenly people started testing and getting shocked with how many items seems to be connected to the microbiome we are what we eat okay let's flip back the next item which I looked at was enzymes and there was basically nothing there. There's one single item which had a um, low enzyme level for it and when items are low the only, oh, the simplest way of dealing with it since such a particular enzyme is not usually available as a supplement is to supplement with a probiotic where the bacteria produces the enzyme in question so in which we're substituting it by a living supplement the probiotic okay let's take a look at this page i'm also going to while i'm over another side go to look at the keg modular which has basically the same thing and what we have here is we have the keg module we have very high levels of b12 which is exactly what we found with the end product analysis two different ways using two different original data sets applied to the same microbiome both of them says lots of b12 in fact when we go further on and look at clinical lab studies they also say lots of b12 so we have agreement or consensus between multiple methods of looking at the microbiome and independent lab tests measuring things without using the microbiome information okay let's flip over and take a look at how we get this information because there may be things significant for yourself or for your, your child on these pages 
So again, changing your microbiome, we have the summary here for enzyme outliers. As with end products, this identifies the outliers off the top of the top. But you're also able to look at all the details, and looking at all the details becomes beneficial down the pipeline, as we'll see in the second video. So let's take a look at cake modulars. We click here, and there we are. We have the one thing there. We could say, okay, let's go all the way down to the 90th percentile, and let's look at the bottom 8th percentile there. And when you change the values, it recalculates it, and we find no change. So we have we have widened our fishing nets to find significant things, and we still come up with the same catch. Let's go on to the enzymes. And we have one thing, and what we have is something which is rare. And rare is means that we have this enzyme most people do not have the bacteria associated with this enzyme or at least the bacteria isn't being reported on the test so it ends up being something interesting if you are a particularly data nerd you could just click that and hop over and take a look at the distribution which may take a few seconds to come in. Okay, there it is. And, oops, I have a follow up. Okay, um, that's a general page. I, I have a error, but okay. I, I have a bad link, so let's not worry too much about that. So that's how we determine those two things. We have a nice short list here. We'll come back later and take a look at looking at the full list. Okay, let's go over and look at the lab test that we provided. The first test, the first thing is that we see we have high arsenic layer. So the question is, is that or is that not significant in terms of autism? Is high so the first so my first question is okay is this significant the second item we have is we have very low lithium lithium i recognize right away because there are a bunch of studies which i had with you earlier stating that lithium helps a lot of people with autism to stop certain type of repetitive behavior here is a link to a study um behavior stabilization so there's a lot of material there let's take a look at how i find out if arsenic is or isn't something in terms of autism i should be concerned with so to do that i basically go over to pubmed and it's pretty straightforward type in the magic words you're interested in like autism and we're talking about arsenic so type those words in and you find there that there are 48 studies there usually for display option i go and make sure it's sorted by most recent and pages per page i'm going to bump it up to 50 to make my life easier so basically it is a list of all of the papers and you can see the historical patterns how often arsenic has been studied with autism um, and what I ended up doing is looking through a few of the papers and um, what we have here is looking at a couple of particular metals and certain DNA mutations, which means if you happen to have the DNA information available, you can look at it. If not, you are likely to, spec to be speculating. Um, other things, for example, arsenic is mentioned somewhere in that article, but it never made it to the title, which, which generally implies that arsenic is not going to be a dominant finding. If it was a dominant finding, it would be in the title. And it goes through, so you can read through, for example, 
here's one of hair analysis which is a good match because this comes from hair analysis etc so you can go into it many of them the full article is sitting there available etc so i went through a few of them and i came to a conclusion you may come to different conclusions the conclusion I came to was that arsenic seems to be by itself a weak factor unless there's also high lead levels. Arsenic and lead in combination is where you get a real whammy. So basically the only items from the hair analysis that stands out as being autism connected with evidence is basically lower lithium, which means <coughs> trying to get some lithium supplements of some form or another would be a supportable thing to go for. It's supportable because it meets my preferred criteria. Published medical studies supports it as being helpful. Two, we have lab results and measurements indicating that it is a potential problem and basically it's a match between the studies and the lab results which means it's probably a reasonably good thing to do a trial of and see if it makes a difference and if it is keep going things like lithium is off is is a trace mineral which means it often depends on where you're getting your food from which is somewhat problematic there are some soils which are actually reasonably high in lithium but the problem is finding out where in the world your fruits are coming from and where in the world what what the lithium content is there and that and opens up a whole different kettle of fish which we won't go down we do have lithium available as supplements i believe largely prescription unfortunately we go on to the organic acid test now and we have a whole stack of issues being shown and we also on the report um we have we show the pattern for those of you who have gone to the lessons and the lessons dealing with enzymes and lessons dealing with cake modulars you recognize this type of diagram although those diagrams are harder to read there's usually they just have magical numbers in each one of them rather than a name even now some of the names may not make great amount of sense others of them will make sense so on the chart we'll see some h's there you also see on this particular one something which I'm not crazy about but that's how they chose to do it you will see things like this and it's not on the color bar the color bar indicates where 68 percent of people's reading are sitting on so you are below the 68 percent but because you are in the outer lines you are within the 95 percent spread usually you need to be outside 95 percent spread for something to be deemed abnormal so in this case it's not a low at zero and the, the range here is 0.46 and actually what's showing here is probably being determined using a gaussian distribution and the average and standard deviation so um when they calculate standard deviation i probably put a negative it's not the ideal way of computing ranges um actually using percentiles would be much better but that has some problems because you now have to do some fancy color gradations on the bar charts and you also have to do a bit more fun with your raw data source okay so we have the high items here which are items which should be significant in some cases high to, as in you have twice the typical upper limits so you go through that chart and you notice the names and the main thing to do is make sure you read it correctly the color section is one standard deviation which means the average value plus or minus um 34 percent of the population two is goes up to 95 percent so we have down below we have the glycerol wall here which seems to be outside there and you could misinterpret that to mean that it is outside desired range well 
it's not really much outside the desired range it's in the within the 95 percent so technically by this standard definition it's not an abnormal result and 27 percent of the measurements are expected to fall there so if you have 100 measurements 27 are expected to be there by randomness serotonin is low which is in the three percent here um right there serotonin remember before we had the serotonin from the end products being predicted to be to be low and we sort of have vague agree agreements here the serotonin levels here is below the average so it's lower but it's not as low in terms of percentile we estimated the end product at the 8.6 percentile and using the charts here one could surmise somewhere between the 30th and 40th percentile in other words we have again we have agreement between the microbiome and the lab results now for the old summary what you need to do is open up excel or worksheet and start copying across these funky names of chemicals which you have no idea of what they are or how to pronounce them so but before we go into that we need to do a little reminding of some mathematics or statistics which you probably were never taught we are dealing with labs that report abnormals when they are in the top or the bottom five percent so we would expect looking at a bunch of samples taken at random of a normal healthy person, 5% will be falling into this category. We have 77 measures, 5% of 77 is approximately four, which means that somewhere between zero and six items showing up would probably be, be viewed as a no issue. There's nothing particularly, no particularly wrong there. Yes, you have some highs or you have some lows, but all of the that type of randomness is basically to be expected due to the natureness of the randomness of making measurements. We have 10, so we have four to six that may be real. We don't know which of the four to six it is, but we have four to six items which we want to do some investigating on. We should add the caveat again, this data is not age specific which means we have greater uncertainty as if these are indeed outliers or normal for this age group. We know the microbiome changes with age, particularly from birth to 16 years old, is radically different than adults. And most of these chemicals are a byproduct of the microbiome, which means the numbers could be eh, not that significant, but again, let's not argue about that instead let's assume that they are worth investigating remember we are detectives we are trying to determine the evidence of what's going on for those of you who are interested in oats or have an oats result i did do a series of four blogs on my autism website so you can go there and take a look through that for every item on the on the um, oats test i went and checked item by item what the medical literature s stated about it and autism and the main purpose was to just identify what oats results could be significant for autism or not okay so we have the items listed on the right and uh, i won't go over into my autism research stuff until probably video lesson the second video you can go and pre-read if you're interested notice all of the items are high we don't have any lows next we go on to the toxic non-metal non chemical profile only one item is there and it's showing it's off the roof the results gives information of what it means where it comes from what we do see is that it has a variety of food sources so one of the question is to look at the diet and see whether or not the, the child consumes a lot of that and it also gives gives you some details because it 
is a particular amino acid that's cooked in high temperature in the presence of sugars which means how it's cooked especially if it's a prepared food um, examples of things they give is potato chips and french fries are two absolute mass states for producing this particular thing so we have one item which is high it's connected to a amino acid being inappropriately cooked if you wish and so the issue is either we could have overproduction with the microbiome of it we could have overconsumption too much of it coming in via the diet or in, for example even things like plastic food wraps um cosmetics drinking treatment of drinking water is cited as one of the causes so you may want to contact your um source for water and see what's in there i have i can keep all your know, water report handy for myself and i know the only thing which we have a problem with happens to be um a bit above normal levels for arsenic but that's it other people will have different things in it especially if you are in a industrial area like the eastern u.s which is where i think the kid is this child is located which means you could have pollution coming into by drinking water it may well be worth getting an example of the drinking water and sending out to a lab to see if it is indeed present if it is then you hit some of the your dilemmas which is oh i'll go to bottle water problem with bottle water is you have to be very careful of the source my, my, much of the bottled water in the U.S. is tap water, which is being put through a filter. Still, would, would contain this type of chemical. My own preference for bottled water is straight from the spring, um, which is a German bottled water, which I can buy at Trader Joe's, and it is direct from spring. It's high in minerals, um, and that tends tends to be my source for bottled water. Um, again. We don't know what the exact cause is. There are a bunch of possible things it needs to be investigated. This study gives a nice description of where it could be coming from, and now we have to find out where it's coming from. And we will, in terms of clearance, look at possibly answering that later on. But at the moment, we simply need to be aware of it. This is simply another item to add to our spreadsheet of items which we are going to need to drill into more. Everything else was fine, was clear, no problem. So let's move on to the next test. Next test is blood work. Blood work, as with all things statistics, you need to be reasonable. There's a lot of different items measured which means that you have a percentage which would be re which would be outside of your reference range by pure randomness and you need to have some common sense usually if it's a slightly out of range it has a low worth to try following up also remember the age is not age specific which also makes it even fuzzier for example here we have ALP is 256, the upper limit is 250. That means we're about 3% outside of the 3% higher than the highest value. 3% is not really that much. This one we have 53 and we want to be over 59. It's below, we're about 10%. It's borderline, but it's not strikingly outside of range. Going through all of the um, paperwork, we only found a small number of items there. Only one amino acid was identified as being high. So that is what we tossed into our Excel spreadsheet. We find we have a couple of titters being high. There's some other titters which dealt with things like Rubala, but I also got the child's um, vaccination forms and the child had had the um, rebella vaccine so the titters for that will be high the other two things we need to do a bit of reading to find out what in the world they mean one thing i was very happy to see is fragile x chromosome is something which happens often with autism it's a special subclass of autism it was tested for and there was negative results so with that i'm happy one 
less complexities because when there's chromosome issues, it's it pushes us hard to be able to deal with them. Okay, let's stop for a moment and look at these two things which I have at this point in time, I have no idea what in the world they mean. But thanks to the internet and Google, we're going to find out. So stay tuned. Okay, so just typed it in and got the definition. Basically, it indicates that either there was or there is currently a streptococcus infection involved. And for that one, we somewhat happy we have a microbiome test result because we can explicitly check for streptococcus, find out what the levels of it is in the person. The other one um, is... Um, a test for a different type of Trapococcus titter. So we end up having the blood work saying that the person either has been vaccinated for Trapococcus, which I don't think there are vaccines available for children at the moment for that, or has recently had one or is currently having one. Again, we can answer that question by looking at the microbiome res result, which is sort of nice. Okay, so now we know what those two lab results mean. Rather than leaving people in suspense as to what is, whether or not they have an active case or not, is if we go to sample visualization, my biome view. And what we will now have is we have to sample microbiome ex Sure, and now if you just type in streptococcus, we'll, what we do is we see what levels they have, and the levels are currently low when the microbiome sample was done, which means that chances are they don't have a active streptococcus. So that probably suggests that they had one sometimes prior to the that test for titters coming through. So one less worry to one less worry for us, one less fact for us to worry about. So, bottom line is, we only have one item from the blood work, which we add to a list of things to look into depth later. Okay, now we hop over to metabolomics, which is another test, and um, the test is sort of interesting. First of all, the test says there's probably a mitochondrial um, dysfunction, which generally means gut bacteria dysfunction. And voila, we hit it right on the mark. Uh, I have no disagreement with that. Already seen enough evidence in the microbiome to say there's a problem somewhere. What we do have is we have them giving suggestions of what persons should take and the quantities. Not sure how exactly they worked it out, but I'm not too concerned. They are things which we need to inspect. We noticed that my vitamin B12, which we have found twice being already high or very high, no need for adding those as supplements. So that means, again, we have consensus between our data from the microbiome through to other lab tests. What we do have is we have certain amino acid which is, are being specified that the person may needs a bit of. So we add each one of those in because for most of them we'll find information about the pathways, what bacteria are involved within, and that may give us some insight as to what bacteria we may want to encourage more or discourage more. So that's very high level of this one. So now let's go onwards. And Basically, on the left, we have a list of everything which I uh, extracted from this report, uh, as in the amino acids, variety of markers, and we have there. The report I've actually found is nice because for one of the suggestions they make, they indicated which markers they are basing it on because the B6 depends on a variety of different processes happening. Bacteria also are involved in the processes. So they're measuring the um, they're measuring the shipments between factories. 
and with the enzymes and the cake modulars, we are as evaluating the factory efficiency. So we are in some ways doing almost the same thing, except one is what's getting shipped and one is what is being processed. So we have the values again. The main thing to keep in mind is make sure we identify actual outliers. They have a range there and make sure it's outside the range. The more outside the range it is, the probably the more critical it is. And we'll come back to that later. The malic acid I find is interesting because typically um, for magnesium supplement, uh, magnesium with, mal with magnesium uh, malate, which is a form of malic acid, is used for supplementation. So there's a question, there's a wee bit of a question is if this person has been doing a lot of magnesium supplementation, which form of it is. The malic is usually used because it's absorbed better. But that could also be the reason why the malic acid is high. Again, that's just something that strikes me as something to be explored because, again, my purpose is to notice oddities and pattern, which as a high function ASD, I'm very good at, and then ask questions and try to answer the question I ask. And some of the questions we may not be able to answer, but we at least will know what the question is that needs to be asked and explored. So we have now we have another big list of things which I'm keeping track of in cell of things to do. Okay, welcome to Nerd Word Solid. All of the names of the chemicals, the processes, which are for 95% of parents with autistic children are word salad. Words you can't even pronounce correctly. Names of acids, name of metabolites. What I should say is you don't need you don't need to really know what they mean. It doesn't hurt to go and do some reading and try finding it out. But what I ended up constructing, you actually don't need to know what it does because we are doing a matching game. And at this point in time, with whatever labs you're going through, hopefully you have a list of items reported high or low. This is your checklist. And the reason we have a checklist is, yes, it may be 20 items, but when we go over to looking at enzymes and modulars, we are talking about thousands of items. And we could use those names to do a quick filter through variety of things to find out what more information we can about it and ideally from that identify the bacteria responsible. Most of the items on this list so far has been high counts. High count is, is easy to deal with because high count means we have too much of a bacteria producing it, which means we now know which bacteria we want to start arresting to slowing down to reduce the numbers of. So, we basically don't need to know what the function is. What we need to do is be able to match it to the bacteria. Once we have the bacteria, we get another word cell. We get a bacteria word salad. But again, that's not a particular concern because the system I've designed is you just put a check mark beside it and then it will take that information and process from what you have selected without you having to know what the bacteria is or what the DNA or what the life cycle is like. So the whole large number, a large part of my process is basically doing matching. Matching to match one thing to another thing to another thing. And the net result is a logical progression towards down towards the very end, how diet should be modified, what supplements, what herbs, what spices, what probiotics may be able to help shift things in the right way. We do have some items which are reported on multiple labs and which have agreement apart from uh, vitamin B12, which we had agreement across everything. We also have four items which were both reported on on multiple labs and the same results came in from multiple labs. Most of the other things, the labs, A reported it, B didn't report it, 
So we end up having an aggregation. We have more information. And generally, the more information we have, the more insight we'll hopefully will have in the long term. Our hope is that we can find these in the cake data and trace them back to a vector involved. And this gives us a um, way of modifying it. Now, before I finish this first lesson, let's take a quick look. What we have is we have from the person, oh, <coughs> okay. We had what the person supplements are, and we have what the recommendations are. And lo and behold, remember, I noticed the malic acid. One advantage of being ASD high function is you tend to identify patterns. We have a magnesium malic being used, which means it will drive up malic acid. Whether this is a source alone of having high malic acid, I don't know. But it's something to consider. A different form of magnesium supplement should possibly be considered because of the high malic acid. And then we have the other things, and all, all of this stuff we'll come to revisiting later. But for the moment, I just sort of far I'll mention it. A couple other things I should mention is what we have. Where is it? Um, we have vitamin B12. Guess what? Every way, every single lab shows high or very high B12. Should the person be taking B12 supplements? I would say not. There's no evidence that it's warranted. So what we will do is we may find by the time we finish that the supplement list has been changed with certain things being crossed out totally. Other things saying, yes, you're right going for the magnesium, but the form of magnesium you are using is not the best choice for your child. Okay, so that I think basically takes us to the and uh, this section, I'm just going to do one quick peek at what's coming up. And the next part is going to be another long section, but it's important to you. It's important to me. So I think you'll bear with it. Okay. Just a, just a quick preview of what's coming up. We have the end products here. And if I go and click cake modular, it will go and show the complete detail, not just the outliers, but the full detail. Similarly, if I go over here and again under keg, go and look at the enzyme. I warn you, it's a slow page. It can take up to three minutes for the page to render. So be patient and the information probably is going to be worth it. So here we have the page having been rendered and now we are going to try a few experiments one of the items which was cited as being high across the board was uh okay no luck with that one okay was well, let's try no matches there. Okay, is what I'm doing is I'm typing in the names of things which were high and seeing if we find any information there. What we do find when I type in the word citric acid, we find the citrate cycle or Krebs cycle being high. Um, it's something reported most of the, of the labs, and we have all of them there. And what from here we can go in and do a exploration as to what's going on. If you want to get more information about it, just click over, and you can see the um, cake diagram. Again, if you want a friendlier version of the diagram. Generally, just type, grab the name of it, and type the word image after it, and you will see dozens of images showing 
what it is with all sorts of names being specified on it so it, it's less obtuse the cake modeler is efficient for what it's trying to do and it's being absolutely specific because everything here is hyper link so if i click on one of those items it takes me over to the particular reaction involved so it's for a technical person absolutely beautiful hyperlink idea but for many of you what you really want to do is see something like this which will give you a better aspect uh remember i was looking for c um sucking an acid i see asking Sucking it eight with ATE there instead of ending in IC. And generally what it means it's the same chemical family involved, which means that this was high, probably is connected in with the Krebs sample, the malic here, or malic acid. Again, in some cases you are going to have to you it may help if you learn a few a little bit of chemistry and how things are named citrate and citric acid are related so we have a little bit of learning curve that you may want to do to better understand the results um because the names have been simplified they have been made very very precise with highly nuanced the difference between who and whom is significant here okay and Let's go back. Here's the far more interesting page, the enzyme page. But as you can see, we have 1900 different measures of enzyme measures for the microbiome sample. We only have 450 bacteria, but by looking at what each one, each bacteria produces as enzymes, we end up with fine gradation of 1900. And we can go and sort by percentile. If we have a small um, level up to something like 15, actually, let's flip over and look, let's look at, let's just keep the 200 per page. 2,000 a page is going to be a bit of a fun. But so we can go and we have a bunch of check marks here. What it means is that we can go in and say, okay, once we determine which ones, which is a to be determined, we're going to go in and select which things which we are concerned about, which is the low amount. And you can see we have a large number of items which are low. Um, and we can now go down to the bottom and it says probiotic for low enzymes. What it does, it looks up all the bacteria that produces this enzyme which are also available as retail probiotics somewhere so what we are going to do is we are going to effectively supplement the enzymes by using a living organism the probiotic itself so if we click here it will go and compute that and now it will show suggest the level and in this case we see the level is the same one each that means that there's probably only a single one of these produces any of these enzymes which implies that it's not that most of the enzymes are not being produced by um probiotics in other words pro probiotics may have limited benefit to this child maybe general pragmatic oh just need probiotics as a universal cure all but this page should have shown a high count for one or more if there is a good prospect of probiotics working. So this is what we selected. We have five there. In theory, one of these should be five. For other examples, I've gotten five for five, which has been sweet. In this case, we don't. And we'll go through and take a look at everything. Uh, a bit later, I may end up writing a few more pages, mainly because of having to deal with what what is be I could describe a sparse probiotic to enzyme matches, which I'm seeing with this particular microbiome. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, I think at one hour I'm ready to take a break, and I think you probably be ready to take a break. So give me a couple of days before I get a second one up. 
second one up is going to be a large number of uh, what I was going to show you and which I got sidetracked from is up here if we go and type in something like for example ARAB um, INOSE we have there this is one of the items which we were high in and what we see is we now see everything that is connected with it um highest is this particular one um and if i click on this one i could open it in a new tab because i don't want to replace this page because it takes ages to load is we now see what the bacteria is and um uh, how often it is and what I have to do is I have to have the ability to select bacteria there so that's more features that need to get implemented uh, before I do the next video um, so that's basically it and over here you can go and you can go and of course change other enzymes remember we have 1900 or more of them so lots of information and the next video is going to be trying to take you through how not to get overwhelmed by the information and to come up with reasonable suggestions at the end of the day what we have done in this one is go over the data we have do the easy stuff we spotted two things which we may want to make changes to already one is no need to do vitamin b12 supplements the other one is to go to a different form of magnesium because magnesium malate may be a contributing factor for having high malic acid. Okay, that's it. I'll shut up.